The Holy Gospel for the Sunday of the church year comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, the 14th chapter. Now large crowds were traveling with Jesus. And he turned and he said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself cannot be my disciples. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he is enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. But what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000. If he cannot, then while he is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the God who loves us all, grace to you and peace. First of all, let me begin by introducing myself. My name is Pastor Doug Grebley, and it is my privilege to serve as assistant to the bishop in the Eastern Synod. Hopefully these sermon offerings by my colleagues have been a blessing to you and have enabled all of us to grow in God's grace, each in our own way, and also enabled your pastor to take a well-deserved break. But now to the matter at hand. Today's sermon. So I have a question for you. How would you describe the perfect pastor? Okay, take a moment. Okay, no one's perfect. So describe the good pastor. I, all, I know you all have an image of the good pastor in your head. Think about that. Here's one take. The good pastor. <clears throat> he, she, they is 28 years old and has been preaching for 30 years. The good pastor is tall and short, lean and hefty, has one brown eye and one blue eye, hair parted in the middle, with one side blonde and straight, the other dark and wavy. And by looking at my hair, you can see I'm not the perfect pastor. The good pastor works from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., from preaching to teaching to visiting 15 senior citizens every day and spending all their time with the youth. And of course, their family never complains. The good pastor preaches powerful and challenging sermons, but they never step on anyone's toes. And of course, never go on for more than 15 minutes. Make it 12 minutes. The good pastor reads all the church growth experts, and they know how important it is to create a safe, caring environment where people believe their concerns will be heard and their needs will be met. The good pastor finds out what people are looking for and gives it to them so they don't leave and join that megachurch across town. The good pastor works hard to make sure worship is satisfying, educational opportunities are appealing, that plenty of opportunities for fellowship and service exist. Okay, next question. Would Jesus have made a good parish pastor in the light of my description? Or whatever description you came up with in your head? not on your life. According to Jesus in today's gospel reading, we cannot be disciples unless we hate our family, carry our crosses, and give up all our possessions. Not in your life, Jesus. 
If Jesus were the pastor of an average congregation, I figure there would be four people left there on Sunday mornings, and chances are those four people would be fooling themselves. Jesus is the complete opposite of the good parish pastor. Far from trying to make it easier for people to follow him, he points out how hard it is. Why does Jesus say all these disturbing things about hating your parents and children? Okay. I think he was being provocative, trying to get people's attentions. It was a rhetorical speaking style common to the time. Of course, Jesus didn't hate his mother Mary, so why should we hate our loved ones? So yes, Jesus uses provocative language to get our attention, and he gets it. But Jesus doesn't stop there. He goes on to say that whoever does not carry his cross cannot be his disciple. And then he goes even further saying that none of us can become his disciples unless we give up all our possessions. Not some, mind you, but all. No. Jesus would not have made a good parish pastor. But I do think he made a very good savior. And I don't think Jesus is through saving us yet. Frankly, in these days of a global pandemic, accompanying economic crisis, political division and discord all over the world, protests for justice and a better world for all people, the war in Ukraine, and every week a new catastrophe, we need Jesus now more than ever. Of course, we Lutherans don't tend to talk that way. We save that perhaps for our Pentecostal sisters and brothers. But we need Jesus. We need a Savior. We need a Jesus through whom God participated in human life. We need a Jesus who often found himself in trouble because he took his place beside the poor, the outcast, the vulnerable. We need a Jesus who asked the right questions and lived the right answers. We need a Jesus who suffered as we may suffer, died as we must die, and was raised to life as we shall all be raised. We need a Jesus whose humanity means ultimate hope for all of humanity. My friends, I do not think that Jesus would have been a very good parish pastor. But Jesus made a very good savior. And Jesus is exactly what our world needs. Jesus' message of peace of sacrificial servanthood, of neighborly love and unconditional justice is exactly what our ailing world needs. Our responsibilities as Christians, as followers of Jesus, and there is a cost to this discipleship, as today's gospel reading clearly points out, our responsibility is to name and claim that message right where we are in our home, our places of work, our places of worship, online or in person, our places of learning, our places of play, our community, our country, our world, and to do it in words and actions, in the most clear, caring, loving, and just ways we can. May it be so. In the name of the God who loves us all. Amen.